back to another video. So in this video, we're going to be taking a look at percentages. Uh, I have looked at this in previous videos, but it continues to be one of the most or frequently asked questions that I receive. So how to increase the number by a percent and basically anything else revolving around percentages. So in the workbook, uh, I've got a couple of sheets uh, and we're just going to go over a variety of different percentage calculations that you may need or wish to calculate uh, and what I'll do is I'll make this workbook available uh, via a link in the description so you can download it after you've watched the video or if you want to jump ahead and get it now you by all means you can. So we'll just step through each one of these really simply and just go over how the calculation works uh, and like I say it'll just give you the information that you need. So the first one we're going to look at is comparing against a baseline so I'm looking at this first table here. So you can see we've got uh, monthly sales figures and what we've got, we've got the 1st of December 2019 all the way through to uh, November of this year. And all we want to simply do is for each of these um, months, uh, so in 2020, we just want to compare this uh, current sales figure against the figure in December. So we can see that the company, uh, for example, obviously sales have been reducing and we just want to compare each of these to this baseline number we're calling in December, just so we can see what it looks like. So in order to do it, it's very simple. We're gonna start on the top part here and all we're gonna do is go equals and take the current sales number divided by, again, in this first example, that same sales number. But this time we're gonna lock C9, so by pushing F4 once, so it's always gonna refer back to C9. If I hit enter, you'll see you've got the value of one. And then as I pull this down, I'm just gonna to get to the bottom here and go fill without formatting. And the last thing we need to do is convert these to a percentage. You can see that we now have that picture. So what it's telling us is obviously this first one here in blue is kind of irrelevant. It's just gonna be our 100% number. So we know that 350,000 is 100% of 350,000. But as we move on, we can see how sales have changed as it's gone on. So if we were to jump ahead to May, for example, we can see that the sales in the month of May are actually 28% of what they were in December last year. So obviously it's not good, but it would actually give you the numbers to actually visualize this in a graph. So if I wanted to put this into a graph, all I'd simply need to do is highlight all these, go on to insert, uh, pick a graph, probably a line graph for this, and you can now see we have this picture here. And this is uh, quite a commonly used um, graph or metric, shall I say, I've used this in previous packs, and it just demonstrates obviously of previous supply or demand being 100%, how does the sort of picture look thereafter? And we can see there's a big drop off here initially and it started to build up again. But I've digressed and done into charts, but this is how you can obviously do a percentage when you're trying to compare it to an initial baseline. So the next one we're going to look at is percentage change. So I've got two options here for percentage change and you'll, you'll see what I'm doing as we step through. The first one is the most simplest of the two, but to be fair, they're both quite simple. If we want to compare 2020 sales against 2019, so obviously 332 against 360, all we need to do is go equals the 2020 number divided by the 2019 number, hit enter. We'll pull this number down and let's just convert that to a percentage as well. And what we can see is that when we compare these two numbers for January, we can see that um, 332,000, so the sales for 2020 are 92% of what they were in 2019. So it's a very similar calculation, or it is the same calculation as we looked at in this first baseline one. But obviously it's gonna show us obviously how things have changed. It's gonna just use, um, should we say 2020, 2019 as the baseline to compare 2022. So yeah, we can see sales in 2020 were 92% of what they were in 2019. And as we go through, we can see that jump down to some bigger ones, actually sales are now 121% of what they were in 2019 for September. So that gives you another way of comparing, um, for instance, or in this example, two years worth of data. Carrying that on, and often what you'll find is you might not want, even though you're wanting to see what the percentage change was, as we have here in February, we don't want to show it as 103%. We actually just want to show what the change was. So it was actually 3%. So we'll move on to option two to do just that. This calculation is slightly different, but it's the same principle. We're gonna do equals and open brackets. And the first part we're gonna do is we're gonna take the 2020 number and deduct from it the 2019 number. And if I was just to do that calculation as it stands, 
you can see we've got minus 27,500, so it's a reduction. So to turn that into a percentage, we want to take the actual change amount, so there's 27,500, and divide that by the 2019 number. So we're basically saying, what is the reduction? It's that 27,000. Okay, what is 27,000 as a percentage against 360,000? Oh, and I haven't actually even put it in there. So yeah, 27,000 divided by 360. So we can see what, you know, what is a percentage of 360,000. And it's not brought anything up first, but if we copy that down, convert these to a percentage, you can there see we actually have now got just the actual change percent. And the reason it's beneficial is again, looking at this first row for January, we can see in the first table we're showing actually it was 92% of what it was the previous year. Um, but actually the benefit of having this change percent in option two is it actually clearly shows what's happened. It's gone minus 8%. And anyone who's used to working with percentages or Excel, to you, that probably doesn't carry much weight. You probably think, yeah, it's just telling me exactly the same thing. But if you're working with an audience who are maybe not too sure of what they're looking at, or they just need a really clear and concise uh, number without having to try and work anything out, obviously that is the favorable uh, way of using option two, because it clearly shows them, regardless of what the numbers were, it's gone down by eight minus 8%, eight and then so on and so forth for all those other numbers as well. So the next one we're going to look at here is, okay, percentage change of baseline. So what we've done in this first, well, we basically copied this table from the first one over here. So we've gone through, got all our calculations, and we now know that each one of these is a percentage of that previous baseline. But just like in option two here, we want to actually know what the actual change was. So rather than saying, okay, we know it's 95% of what it was, we just want to show obviously it's a reduction of X percent. In order to do that, again, really simple one to do. All we need to do here is go equals, and we're gonna enter the number one, because one um, refers to 100%. Uh, and as I'll go over this in the next sheet, but as we know, percentages in numbers and especially in Excel, they are treated as a decimal number. So if you wanted 50%, obviously it's 0.5, uh, with number one ref re um, referencing 100%. So all we need to do is go 100% minus the percentage we have here, hit enter, copy this down. Obviously, I'm going to just uh, do without um, do without formatting. Oh, and that one's not done the percentage. And you can now see we've kind of got the inverse really of what it was. So we now know that the percentage of baseline here. So our sales here were are 95% of what they were in December, and that reflects a reduction of 5%. So we know there's been a change of 5%. And if you wanted to get clever, or obviously just slightly change this, then obviously you could add the minus sign in here as well if you wish. But the purpose here was literally just to show you how you can obviously get the, uh, like say, the inverse here. So rather than the 95, okay, what was the actual change, which is 5%. So moving on, and I hope I'm not going through this too quickly, but I'm trying to keep it nice and concise without you know, spreading the video out more than it needs to be. And this is the table I was referring to in that last example. So if you weren't aware, obviously percentage, as you see it formatted in Excel, will display like this. So 100%, 75%, 50%, and 25%. And because we reflect them as a decimal number, this is how you can see it looks here. So the real simple calculation is, is if you want to work out what 25% of 100 is, all you need to do is go 100 times 0 0.25, and then you can see it's given us 25. So that's the real quick way of obviously um, doing your manual maths with percentages in Excel, well, even just on the calculator as well. But what we're gonna do is gonna cover off a couple more calculations in this sheet here. So the first thing we want to do is increase by percentage. So we've got similar sales numbers that we looked on the last sheet. So we've got the sales total, and this time we've been told a percentage that we want to increase this sales amount by. In order to do that, all we need to do is go equals, and let's sort of step back a bit here. So if we were to remove percentages from this for one second, so let's change that back to the general, we can see obviously the decimal number that obviously refers to the percentage that we're trying to do, just obviously unformatted here. So if we wanted to obviously increase 332,000 by 5%, what we actually need to do is we want to times that by 105%. So in order to do that, uh, all we simply need to do now is convert as such our increased number to reflect 105% rather than just 5%. So in order to do that, all we're gonna do is go equals, 
and we'll do 1, which refers to 100, plus the 0 0.05. And if we were to put this back to a decimal as well, you can see that we now have a value of 1.05. And this is the actual number we want to times our sales by. So just to tidy our calculation up, all we need to do here is put this into brackets. The part was actually calculating us into a, or calculating our actual um, number we want to increase or times by. And all we need to do is go select sales times by that calculation, which gives us 105%, hit enter, and you can see that's now been updated for us. And if I was to put an easier number in here, so let's say 100,000, we can see it's done obviously 105,000 because we know 5% of 100,000 is 5,000. So obviously that 5,000 added onto 100,000 gives us our correct result of 105,000. And if I copy that down for all these other um, calculations, let's get rid of decimal places, change that back to a percentage, you can see how our result has changed there. Next one from that would be how to decrease by a certain percentage. So it's going to work exactly the same apart from rather than add our increase to, our, to one, we're simply going to deduct it from one to give us the opposite. So what we're going to do here is go equals one minus 5%, which gives us 95% or if we go into here, it makes it a bit easier. So obviously one minus that, gives us 95 or 0.95, referring to 95%. And that is exactly the same. So all we need to now do is go sales times point or sales times 95% obviously would reflect a 5% decrease. So all we're gonna do here is at the front, we're gonna go sales times by that. And that gives us our result. We'll copy it down, get rid of the decimal places. And yeah, just to put an easier number in here, so 100,000. You can see, obviously, a 5% of 100,000, we know, again, is uh, 5,000. Therefore, to decrease by 5,000 would give us a result of 95,000. The next one we're going to look at here, and we've only got two more, so please just bear with us if you made it this far. So find 100%. So we've been given these numbers, so we've got five numbers here, and we know that for this first example, well, our number of 50 reflects 5% of its total value. So we want to find out what 100% of 50 is uh, when we know that 50 is equal to 5% of that number. So to easily do this, all we need to do is go equals, take our number, divided by our 5%, which is 0 0.05, and that will give us our result. And for us, it's going to be a thousand. And it's not a thousand pounds, we'll just change it to number. So if we go to general on this one, there we go. So we can see that, yeah, we know 50 is 5% of a thousand. So to obtain this result, all we need to do is take our initial number, divide it by the percentage that it, it reflects, or it is of that other number. And that's how we can then get our 1000 result. And as you copy that down, you'll see how all the rest of these ones work. And obviously some of these are easier than others. So obviously two, uh, 200 is gonna be 10% of 2000. So that's an easier one to work out. And the very last one, and I sort of did touch on it down here, is if you wanted to do any calculations manually, the easiest way is to just type them in. So let's say we wanted to work out what 5% of 100 was. All we need to do is go equals, take our value of 100, times by 0 0.05, and you get the value of five, um, as you can see there. Let's just put this back to general. Alternatively, if you didn't have the number of 100 and you just wanted to do the type the maths in, so you're just trying to work something out, if you just typed in 100 times 0 0.05, again, that would give you your 5%. If, however, you wanted to do decrease by 5%, again, all you need to do is go equals the same calculation, 200, um, 200 <laughs> being our number, and then we're gonna times that by minus 0 0.05. So I've literally just done a minus sign there rather than the plus over here. And you can see that we've got that same result as well. So that gives us a minus 10 and everything in between. So if you want to do obviously increase 100 by 100 uh, by 5%, all you need to do times 1.05 and that will do the result for you. So I hope all that made sense. Uh, as I said, I'm gonna make this document available to you uh, via a link in the description. So if you click that link, you'll be able to download the document and get all the calculations you need. And then hopefully this, well, the video will serve as a purpose of showing you just different calculations of percentage that you can either use 
or obviously the answers if you did have any questions. And also, if you've got the workbook, you can obviously refer to that uh, as and when you need if you want to do any of these calculations. So I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please do give the video a like. It would be greatly appreciated by myself. And if you're new to the channel or you have watched uh, one of our videos before, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification button so you're notified of all of our future videos. So lastly, thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Thank you.